Hi YouTubers, welcome back. This is the sixth video in our video series dedicated to teaching you how to program a chess engine from scratch in the Java programming language. Uh, so far we've focused on building out the legal moves for a single piece, a knight. And uh, recall in our prior videos that I meant, in a prior video I mentioned that here we were going to uh, sort of add a legal move. And in inside of our le calculate legal moves method we would add a legal move. But I stubbed that out. So what I want to do in this video is I want to focus on um, adding more definition to the move class. Um, so right now, really, there's nothing on here, uh, but what we will do in this video is add uh, some more flesh, if you will, onto the move class. And this is actually going to be one of the bigger classes, um, you know, and we'll build on it incrementally. I'm not going to go through all of it in one video. Uh, we'll sort of do what at the minimum amount required to uh, be able to finish the night appropriately. Um, but before I do that, I want you to recall that uh, as I was building out the night class, I sort of introduced these uh, constants. Uh, you know, I, I said that I would have uh, an array of Booleans that represented the first column, an array of Booleans that represented the second column, the seventh and the eighth, and I said, you know, it's going to be, uh, you know, an array of booleans of size 64, which happens to be the size of a chessboard, and only the um, the uh, indexes that correspond to the first column of a chessboard uh, will be turned on. All of the others will be turned off. But I didn't really implement that. Uh, so, so the first thing I want to do is uh, walk through the implementation of that. And um, I think, you know, there's different ways you could do this, right? I could write a method, a unique method, for each one of these. And I could say, uh, and the easiest thing would be to just say, first column of 0 equals true, first column of, uh, you know, 8 equals true, first column of, etc. equals true. Um, but instead I'm going to write a method that's a little bit more generic, um, but will require a little bit more understanding. So let's call this method init column, and you're going to give it a column number. Uh, so let's say we're going to give it a column number. First column. Uh, let's see. Create method. So this is going to be a method. I'm going to call this column number. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to declare my Boolean array, final Boolean column is equal to new Boolean 64, and let's say do while we use this construct column number is less than 64. Right, uh, column of column number is equal to true, and column number plus equals eight. So let's walk through this real quick, and then at the end we'll hear here we'll say return column. Right, so let's see what this will do. So first it's going to declare an array of boolean of size 64 and then um, it, it takes a single parameter, column number, and so imagine in my chessboard I have columns numbered from 0 to 7. Uh, so it's going to come in here and it's going to say uh, that column of 0, the first tile in a chessboard, 
column of zeros equal to true, then it's going to add 8. Then it's going to say column of number of 8 is equal to true. Then it's going to add 8 again. That's going to be column number of 16. I think you get the idea, right? So for any column that you give it, right, so if I gave it the, let's say I gave it the column number 1, uh, it's going to add, eight. it's going to first set column number of 1 equals to true. So let's look at it here in a, let's, and the Wikipedia entry for the night. Um, chess night Wikipedia. Right, so let's look at this one more time here. I think everybody gets the idea. If we gave it 0, it would set this guy, then this guy, then this guy, then this guy to true, all of these guys to true. And by virtue of the fact that, that uh, so for a Boolean array, by virtue of the fact that we don't have to set all of the other values to false, by default they will be false. So if I gave it a 1, this, is, this, would, be, this would correspond to the square that represents the first column, it would start here and add 8, go here, add 8, go here, add 8, and each time it would set each of these um, indexes in the Boolean array to true. So that's a nice little method that we were able to write, um, and we'll be able to use that to initialize the first column, and we'll to initialize, we can use it again to initialize the second column. Can use that here to initialize the seventh column and the eighth column. And notice it's just sort of, um, you know, the way you would naturally think of it. The eighth column might correspond to index eight uh, in your mind, but it's uh, you know eight minus one really because we're zero offset. Um, so now we have uh, this convenient little method and our Let's move it so that these other constants can happily live next to each other. Um, let's put that right there, right? And there's a couple of other minor constants that I want to introduce. Public static final int num tiles equals 64. So then now here I can say num tiles, num tiles, and public, oop, public static final int num tiles per row is equal to eight on a chessboard. So then here I can just say num tiles per row num tiles and I think that's good for now. I think I recall that in the tile class we iterated, ah here we are, 64 so we can say board utils dot num tiles there, use the constant instead of a magic number. Okay that cleaned up pretty nicely. Let's see while we're here Oh, I forgot to mark this final. Uh, let's see if there's any other cleanup I can do. Mark that final. Okay, you'll see me sort of incrementally improving the code uh, throughout this exercise. Uh, here we go, mark that guy final. Uh, we can't mark that one final because we actually use that local variable. Um, inside of our do while loop here, we mutate this this guy. Uh, okay, so I think that's good enough for now. Now let's go to the move class, and let's see where do we want to start here. So let's start with the constructor. Let's say that. We know we're going to have to keep track of the board that we moved on. And we know that we want to keep track of the piece that was moved. And we know, oops, and we know we want to keep track of where that piece moved. Okay, let's import the 
ID is complaining, so let's fix that import. Now it's saying that these variables are final and they haven't been initialized. So let's say move final board board final piece moved piece final int destination coordinate. Let's keep track of this. Destination coordinate is destination coordinate. And I think what we want is we looked here and we wanted we knew we wanted to distinguish between a move that a norm, what, what I would call sort of a normal move, a non-attacking move, and an attacking move. So when we come back to board here, let's let me fix that little compiler. Let's say that this class is abstract, and let's declare some subclasses in here. Let's say public static final move, let's call it a major move, a major piece, it's almost like a, my, my thinking here is it's a major piece move. So major move extends move, final static, oh, public static final class, sorry. Um, Let's create that and public static final class attack move extends move. Let's that there. And let's fix that. Okay. Okay, so now we have these two different move types. And let's clean this up a little bit. I know that in an attack move, there's one more thing that we'll want to keep track of, which is the piece that's being attacked. So let's declare that here, final piece, attacked piece. And let's pass that in. Final piece, attacked piece. Okay, and now that we've done that, let's make this constructor private. And let's go ahead and use our new class um, here in Knight. This is where we're seeing our compiler errors right now. Let's say that this was the case where the destination location was not occupied, so that's going to just be a new major move, a major piece move. And we're going to say, we're going to pass in the board and the piece, which is the current night that we're on, so it's going to be this, the this pointer, um, and the destination location which is going to be the candidate destination coordinate. Right, let's fix that. Oh, it's not public, that's why. <laughs> so, huh, what's that complaining about? Let's see if the IDE can help us here. Make major move public. That's what I thought I did. Oh, the constructors aren't public. 
Okay. And we don't need that qualifier. Or do we? Huh. Ah, here we are. If I add on-demand on static import, I won't need to qualify that. There we go. And so that's going to be an attack move, new attack move. And here we can say board this candidate destination coordinate and piece it at candidate destination coordinate. There we go. Okay, fantastic. So, sorry about that confusion there for a second. Let's see if we can clean this code up a little bit. Final. Let's go back. Look at this one more time. Oh, I noticed I didn't declare this argument final. I could. Let's do that. Okay. That's pretty good. Okay. So, let's summarize what we've done here. Um, we... Tidied, tidied up the board utils class. We added a nice little uh, convenience method that's going to allow us to um, initialize uh, and keep track of a particular tile on our, or excuse me, a particular column in our chessboard. That was really convenient. And we were using that here in the night class to calculate the, uh, the, the column exclusions. Um, and we Flesh, we started to flesh out the night class. Uh, we're going to do more of this in the future. Um, but I think now we, we can at least sort of capture the information that we want about a move. Uh, there's going to be a lot of behavior that we're going to need to define on here. The most important behavior is the to execute a move, how to execute a move. And so um, in order to do that, we're going to need to... Uh, flesh it out more of the board class uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of stop here and we will do that in a future video